So the derivative as a function. Now there's different types of notations for derivatives. I'm going to hit this up really fast. Um, the first one that you guys are probably used to is Lagrange's, Lagrange, Lagrange's notation. Okay, and we, they all have different notations because in their own studies, they knew um, the concept, but they just needed a way to write it. And they wrote it a certain way that worked best for them, whatever else, whatever they were studying. So if you look at, you know, Newton right here, and you look at all the stuff that he was doing, this made more sense for him. But anyways, we use uh, Lagrange and Leibniz the most. Okay, so this one right here says f prime is our first derivative. So that's, that's cool to write down. Uh, we are not, we're not looking at the second derivative yet, but we'll get there. And the same with the third derivative. Oh, there's multiple derivatives. Yeah, but we're only working on first derivatives. Don't get ahead of me. All right, now f prime can also be written. You, you will also see it like this. You'll see um, y prime. Okay, or you can see y double prime. Okay, so this equals the first derivative also. Okay, and that's what we would call Lagrange's notation. All right, and you could use them interchangeably, just whatever works better for you at that time. Now, Leibniz, this was really important, especially when we come to implicit differentiation, uh, which you don't need to know what that means yet. But um, So this says dy over dx. This is not division. Okay, it looks like it. It's not. That's kind of a, a stumbling block for you guys. This says the derivative of the function y with respect to x. And I'm going to write that down. So again, it's the derivative of the function y with respect to x. Uh, that's what this is saying right here. So you could see it like this. Okay, let's say, uh, let's say we have this function uh, y equals x squared plus 5. And you wanted to take the derivative of it. This is what you would see you would see d over dx of y equals d over dx of x squared plus 5. Now, what this means is you're going to take the derivative of this function y. And so we're going to take the derivative of this. You would write, like you would simplify this by writing it like this. You would say dy over dx. That y is the function. This y is that. It kind of follows the same rules like if you were multiplying, but we're not multiplying or dividing here. This is just a way to write it. This is like another language here. And then on this side, you would take the derivative of this. Now, so far, we've only seen, we've only looked at uh, how to find the derivative using limits and the quotient, um, the difference quotient, okay? Today, we're going to look at the shortcut. You guys want to see the shortcut? Yes. Yeah, you do. Okay, so let's get on with this. Um, find the points on the graph of this function where the tangent line is horizontal. Now that, um, you know what all these words mean, but it sounds like, uh, what, what exactly is it trying to ask me here? I, I'm not quite sure what it's saying. Okay, um, so we have a curve right here. This function uh, gives us a curve on a graph. Now there's certain points in this graph where the tangent line would be horizontal. So let's say, let's say this was my curve, I don't know. All right, um, if I drew a tangent line right here, that would be horizontal, right? Right? If I drew a tangent line right there, that would be horizontal. What are the slopes of horizontal lines? Zero. So I'm going to write that down really fast because we're going to need that later. Okay, so uh, a horizontal line, that will give me the slope that is zero. All right, so let's get down with this. Let's write it out. Um, we're, I'm going to use... Uh, um, the f prime instead of the other notation. So f prime of t is going to be, okay, so this is the derivative of f. All right, so this is how you do the shortcut. You guys ready for this action? Yeah. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the derivative, essentially, of this guy, this guy, and this guy. So we got to take the derivative three times here using the power rule. And the power rule says this, uh, n x raised to the n minus 1. So what does that mean? That means this. Uh, <coughs> let's take our t to the third. So and what you do is you take that 3 and you drop him. He's now going to be multiplying to, to, to the t. So we have 3 times t. And what happens to our exponent? It becomes a 2. So we subtract 1 from the exponent. And we also, well, first we drop the exponent. Then we subtract 1 from the exponent. This is the derivative of that guy right there. So you didn't have to do the whole limit stuff. OK? Um, Oh, I love those groans right there. That was great. Um, 
So now we have a negative 12 t. Now, what exponent does that, that t have right there? It has a 1. Okay, so if I take that 1 and drop him, that would be 1 times negative 12, which would be negative 12. Okay, and then we have t to the what? Zero. To the 0. And what is t to the 0? One. That's 1. So this is just negative 12. Okay, and then the last one, you'll get really fast. Um, this is, a, this is a, a constant. It doesn't have a t with it. But if it did have a t, it, it, it would be it would be t to the zero power, right? So check this out. So we take that zero and we would drop him. And what is four times zero? Zero. Oh, so that would be zero. And then it doesn't even matter subtracting one from the zero, right? I mean, you would get t to the negative one, but what is zero times anything? So it's zero. So constants go away when you take the derivative of them. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's fancy. And so our answer is three um, t squared. Um, what is that? Minus 12. Yeah, that's it. We use the product rule to find this. Product rule is sweet. It's better than the limits. It's a lot shorter. Um, what is this? Yes, I love that you said the derivative function. Now you can say derivative function, or you can say the slope function, or you can say the rate of change function. Okay, because um, that function right there will give you the slope of any um, point on the on the graph. So. This says, um, where, where on this graph is a tangent line horizontal? What's the slope equal when it's horizontal? Zero. So what am I going to do with this thing? You're going to set it equal to zero. Oh, my goodness. So we're going to say zero equals 3t squared minus 12. Now, this is kind of weird because you see this t right here? That's the same t as this t right here. They're the same t's. Okay, so let's solve it really quick. We add 12 to both sides. And then we divide both sides by 3. And then we square root both sides. Plus or minus. So we have two t's where the tangent line would be horizontal. And remember where I showed you guys where you would see a horizontal line? That's when the curve switches from going up and then starts going down. Or when it's going down and it starts going up. Okay, now the coolest part is if you actually graph this to see it work. So uh, if you have a graphing calculator, take it out and graph it. So here's the graph. And you guys will notice at 2, or negative 2 right here, and at positive 2, what would that tangent line be? Yeah. Well, it would be horizontal. The slope would be 0. Cool, huh? Yeah. What the heck? That's so neat. So because it says, I almost skipped this, sorry, I, I circled that as my answer, but because it says points, we technically should have an ordered pair. So we have two points here. We have 2 comma something and then negative 2 comma something. How do I find those y's? Plug it into what, though? Do I plug it into the, the f prime or the original? Yeah, the original. Can you guys tell me what they are? Negative 12 for 2. Negative 12 and, wait, are you sure? 20. Yes. And 20? You're, you're positive. Pretty much. Uh -huh. Shouldn't they be the same? Alright, see? You're right. Uh, because, oops, go back. Because uh, right here, that's that's 20, obviously, right? And down here is uh, negative 12. That's right. Negative 12. Alright, cool. Um, Alright, that one's done.